Hey there, guys. We, we didn't do one of these last week. Things were just really busy. And tiresome. But hey, we're finally back to doing a formal Funny Bad review, because the last one was me just ranting in front of a camera. That wasn't very fun. No one watched that. No one watched that. Uh, so we're back with the formal Funny Bad reviews, and we're talking about... Daredevil is directed by Mark Steven Johnson, who went on to uh, write and direct Ghost Rider. He doesn't have a good record in movies. No, he doesn't. Not at all. He might have the worst, actually. <laughs> well, no, he, he's not Paul W.S. Anderson, mm -hmm. who has Alien vs. Predator and all the Resident Evil movies. So, yeah, it could be worse. <laughs> But, so, Daredevil is based off of Marvel Comics character Daredevil. He's a blind lawyer during the day, and he's a blind, basically, Batman at night. <coughs> Foreshadowing a little bit. Yeah, yeah, it really <laughs> is. So, uh, let's just get right into it, guys. So Daredevil starts off with these main titles that look, that like, are the names of all the actors and stuff, but in braille, made out of the window lights of the buildings in the New York skyline. Because, because you wanted blind people to be able to see what the names were, too. We don't want to be inconsiderate now. <laughs> Uh, so, <laughs> starts out with Daredevil standing on top of a church, and then he falls in hilariously, and then you get a close-up of Ben Affleck's derpy face. Because cause this is how Ben Affleck acts blind. Exactly. Actually, that's almost spot on. <laughs> <laughs> So you get a close-up of his derpy face, and then it flashes back to how this all started. And there's narration, too. Ben Affleck also, narrates also, it. Also, Kid Affleck doesn't know kid. how... Kid... I said Affleck. The kid, Affleck! The kid who plays young Mac Murdock in this movie is... pretty bad. He doesn't know how to act blind, either. He doesn't know how to act blind either, but I think he acts blind a little bit better. Which is kind of sad, considering he's a kid actor. <laughs> kid Affleck gets beat up by the kid from The Sopranos because his dad works for Jimmy Fallon. Not really, but it's this guy named Fallon. Hey, I got and... him up too. <laughs> <laughs> no, but so he, he goes to his dad, and his dad's like, I'm not working for that guy. I'm gonna get my crap together. It's you and me, buddy. And then, um, he gets all A's on his report card, and he takes it to, he goes to see his dad to show him he got all A's, and he sees his dad roughing up some guy, and he drops his report card, and it's really, it's a really dramatic shot of him dropping his report card in a puddle. And he just goes away. And his dad noticed that he saw him, and he was like, No! Matt! Come back! And then... Matt gets chemicals in his eyes, and he gets blinded, and... And then we get this... horrible... scene. So, I get that, like, blind people, when they lose their sight, their other senses are enhanced more to make up for the lack of one sense. But I 
I don't know if it's really enhancing. I, it's more just paying more attention to that sense. Well, I mean, there is. Well, that I mean, you could technically say that that is enhancing. Enhancing, yeah, I guess. But this is almost like superpower levels of advanced hearing. Yeah, apparently, if you get stuff in your eyes, your ears become. No, but so then we get this whole little montage of him as a kid struggling, not really struggling, but just like coping with being blind and having this advanced sense of hearing so he can hear stuff really well. And it's almost like a form of sight because he, he has echolocation. Pretty much, yeah. He is a bat. Man. <laughs> oh my god. And and then he saves Stan Lee. Hey, pointless cameo. Glad it was kind of pointless, actually. Yeah. Don't want him to have any more of a part in this movie. Yeah. So, then... We see him... As a grown-up, he wakes up in this, like, coffin tub of water. It's every Tuesday. Every, every, yeah, average <laughs> Tuesday in Ben Affleck's life. Average Tuesday. I don't understand why he has that. No, the, it doesn't make any sense. See... I I kind of thought of an explanation, like maybe sleeping in the water drowns out the sounds of the outside world. But then later on, you hear a voice message on his phone from who I can only assume is his girlfriend, who said that she slept over. And he has a bed. And he has a bed. And he slept the whole night. Or well, the rest of the night, at least. It's so inconsistent. <laughs> So why would he need the, the coffin of water? <laughs> but so we get to, we get to see him as a lawyer, which is cool, I guess. Of course, he says justice is blind because he's blind. Justice. Justice. No, but so this guy who apparently he can tell was guilty because he listened to his heartbeat. Because apparently, when people lie, their heart starts to beat faster, which I guess I can kind of buy. Or they're just getting nervous. Yeah, which I can kind of buy that. It depends on the person, I guess. And so, but you think with a criminal, like, the way he is, you would think that he would learn to be able to lie without showing signs. By the way, I'm rubbing my belt. That's, yeah, he is. you wondering, because my arm's kind of moving. <laughs> it's a little awkward. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just messing with my belt. No, but so, so Affleck Sorry. follows him to this bar, and there's a bar fight, and it's really stupid because he wasn't even hiding; he was just like sitting up yeah, in he the. He was sitting on the. He was sitting up in the rafters, and the everyone was just looking at him, and like, what do you want? The Trust one, us. the one guy is like, "Yo, what's this guy's deal?" And then, and then they're like, "What do you want? Justice." <laughs> I'm bad. No, I'm sorry. Sorry. Uh, Daredevil. <laughs> <laughs> no, so he, so he follows this guy, and they go to the subway, not the restaurant, but like the actual the train, the subway train, and it pushes him onto the track, and there's a train coming. And then we get this incredible scene that isn't in any way hilariously awful. Hey, that light at the end of the tunnel? Guess what? That's not heaven. I'm killing you, I'm killing you! That's the sea train! I'm killing you! That light at the end of the tunnel? Guess what? That ain't heaven. That's the sea train. Yeah, and also, um, the person who shot this movie 
or edited it in such a way that they thought this was cool needs to stop trying. Like, sorry, your career's over. It's not good. And that's me being polite. <laughs> <laughs> like, stop shooting movies like that. It's terrible. <laughs> so, we get to see more of Matt with his friend Foggy, played by John Favreau. I like John Favreau. He directed Iron Man. I like Iron Man. He directed Elf. I love Elf. He directed Zathura. Zathura's alright. He made the Jungle Book, the new Jungle Book, and he's making the new Lion King. Basically, you have a very, very talented um, director, comedian, actor, so what in God's name was he doing in this movie? <laughs> the only conclusion I can he come was to tripping, man. The only conclusion I can come to is that he was trying to maybe like think like, oh, I want to make a superhero movie one day. I should be in one so I can take notes on how to make one. But he picked the wrong one. He should have been an X-Men. He should have been Toad in X-Men. <laughs> but so, they're hanging out in this coffee shop, and... Foggy pulls a complete douche move on Matt, and he... And instead of handing him honey... To pour in his coffee, he hands him mustard. So, Ben squirts mustard into his coffee, but then he switches his coffee with Foggy. So Foggy drinks it. And that was kind of funny, actually. That was, like, one of the funnier... Yeah, but it's time so poorly, because... <laughs> <laughs> what are you, blind? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, but so, um, Electra walks in, Jennifer Garner, and he goes up to her and talks to her and he's like, uh, can you hand me the the honey? And she's like, yeah, it's right there. Can you be a little more specific? And she's like, what are you, blind? And, well, she yeah. goes, what are you? And then he goes, blind? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then her tone shifts so much. It's kind of hilarious. She's like, what are you, blind? Yes. Oh my god, I'm so <laughs> sorry. Well, well, how else would you react? You just call a blind man blind. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, sorry. But no, because I wouldn't have reacted that much if it was me because of the way he, his tone was. Because he was like, blind? Yes. And he had a big old smirk on his face. So I'd be like, oh my god, I'm, I'm so sorry. Here you go, buddy. We should hang out. <laughs> no, but so he tries to get her name, and he starts following her, because that's the thing, that's the cool thing to do in superhero movies when you're trying to get a girl. You gotta stalk them. I mean, just... Spider-Man! Yeah, just ask Peter Parker <laughs> in the Amazing Spider-Man movies. Just... Have you been following me? Just once a day. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes more. <laughs> it's an actual line that was written by people. People got paid to write that line. So, she decides to defend herself, and then they both just basically, they, they challenge each other to a fight, so they fight in this playground, and she's fighting a blind guy. A blind guy. She can't win here. 
I, she's just bad with blind people. Cause no, cause either, either she gets her butt kicked by a blind guy, or she beat the crap out of a blind guy. She can't win morally in this situation. Also, my dad, um, <coughs> Street Fighter much? Oh yeah. Yeah, or this Mortal is clear, or this is clearly game. ripped off of like it feels like a video game fight. Yeah, like, well, they how they f first see it, see it, they like do the pose. Yeah, and they, they're, they're yeah, like, they, and then the camera turns and it's just like it's <laughs> it's like a zoom pan over yeah. like <laughs> to like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then we get introduced to my personal favorite character in this movie, the one character that I think makes this movie a lot more entertaining than it would have been without him. Colin Farrell as Bullseye. Like, I think the best characters in this movie are Colin Farrell as Bullseye and Michael Clark Duncan as the Kingpin, because they are the only two that are actually having fun in this movie. Like, they are cracking jokes, being over the top, and it is really freaking entertaining to watch. Meanwhile, you got Ben and Jennifer pre-divorce. Meanwhile, you have Affleck. You have Ben and Jennifer pre-divorce just... Someone had to have being, make being that boring. Affleck, like, put Ben Affleck's face on an Affleck duck. Someone had had have done that before. No, but, Please um, tell me they exist. I'm going to look that up later. <laughs> but so... You have them being so dramatic, and then on the flip... And they're the heroes, so you have the heroes being so overdramatic, and then on the flip side, you have the villains, who are just being over the top and having some serious fun. But so, we get introduced to Bullseye, and it's the strongest opening I've ever seen. He's playing, like, darts in a bar, and there's, like, this Irish song playing in the background, and then the dude calls him like Irish scum or something, and then he's just, he's all magical, he, he reaches into his pocket, and he pulls out a paper clip, and then he goes like that, and then he, and then now the paper clip is all straightened out, Whoa. like magic, all he did was go like that, and then all of a sudden, it's broken up into little pieces, and he's just throwing these little pieces into the dude's throat, and then the dude dies. And it was incredible. Really great opening. But then... <laughs> he's on a plane to the United States. And we get this... INCREDIBLE scene! He did very well for himself on the internet. But don't ask me how. <laughs> you know, they did get me a computer for Christmas last year. But I... Oh, but who can afford to fly these days? But then my sister Marjorie called and said she had these frequent flyer vials and she couldn't use them because her son this nerve was acting. So I said... Oh, she's sleeping. Can I get you anything before we land? My peanuts? Please. More peanuts, please. Oh, why is she sleeping? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, he needs to get a spin-off. Like, there's no way it could happen now, seeing as you got the rights to Daredevil went back to Marvel, and they have the Netflix show, and this movie was made by Fox. But there has to be a way. There has to be a way we can get a Colin Farrell bullseye movie. If we're getting a Venom movie without Spider-Man. Anyways. So, Ben goes out daredeviling another night and he beats the crap out of this dude. And then there was a kid watching and we get this scene. I'm not the bad guy, kid. Brooding on the rooftop. I'm not the bad guy. I'm not. I've killed like five people. So I've killed. I've killed like fifteen people in this movie, but I'm not the bad guy. No. No. 
So, they get, Ben gets invited to this party because he's banging Electra, and he gets to bring a plus one, so he brings Foggy, and Foggy's just, this is what happens when you leave the sidekick on their own, they start doing this to statues. Again, it's one of the funniest moments in the movie, but it's like... Disappointing. It's disappointing. <laughs> but don't worry, we don't get too much of that boring stuff quick because we have yet again another action sequence. And this one involves Bullseye. And it's so good. Roll the clip. <laughs> Bullseye. I just love that. Bullseye! Eh? Eh? And then he flips the trench coat. I love Bullseye! But so, electric nachos... Electra nacho... I forget her father's name. I don't know, he's dead. He's dead though, so... <laughs> um... But uh, he got killed by Ben's walking stick. And then, freaking smelly Gabe from Percy Jackson, he wants to see what information they got, so he bribes the dude at the evidence locker to show him the stick. And we get the most pointless cameo for this movie, not only because this is Daredevil, and it makes no sense, but also because this is a Marvel movie, and from everything I've gathered, it seems like this, he's more of a DC fan than a Marvel guy. But roll the pointless cameo! Oh, cha-ching. be good, Kirby. You know, Mayor, it's always done. Why is Kevin Smith in this movie? <laughs> like, that's, that's a legit question. I think, I think Mason's spirit is broken. I don't know. I, I just... It's bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but so... So then, as if this movie didn't already have an early 2000s -y soundtrack, we get this scene of Electra training with her size. Mason, you know what's coming. Wait, me! <laughs> Wave me up and I can't wait. Wave me up and say. Not only does it not go with the tone, but it's so obviously just used because it was popular in that time. In 2003. Yep, they're like, hey, we'll get all the teen kids to watch our movie because we used that song. Because we used Evanescence in our movie. It doesn't even go with the tone of what's happening. It it really doesn't. No. So... So then... Ben's just... He goes out on the rooftop and they're like... The, the KKK are washing all their cloaks on this rooftop. Yeah, it's just all white sheets. It's all white sheets. <laughs> and, and he's just he's just sitting there waving his stick to look cool. Check it out. He's so obviously like... This is cool. Just... I'm awesome. I'm, there's gonna be so many toys made of this. 
There was one. <laughs> okay. Well. Or maybe two. I don't know. <laughs> but so there's there's a fight scene, and Bullseye is awesome because he can catch stuff and throw stuff. And then Electra tries to do the exact same thing because she tosses the sigh at him. And she's and he, like, I can do that. And then he, just, he catch, oh, God, that's a bad idea. He, he catches it in his hand like this. And then he tosses it back at her. And she's like, oh, I can do that too. And it goes through her, yeah, she's, her she's palm. Like, hey, I can do that too. Oh, God, that's a terrible <laughs> idea. Oh, God. I already <laughs> got my decision. <laughs> and then he's like, he's trying to touch her. And she keeps, like, swatting his hand away. <laughs> and then he grabs her by the throat, lifts her up, and he stabs her with her sigh and kills her. Yeah, I feel like, I feel like that part was, that scene right there was, like, her being serious and, like, yeah. like hey, stop. Like, stop. Can we cut? I'm, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired. I need f I need five minutes. Me me and Ben need five minutes just, alone. Just, just stop. I, can we cut, please? <laughs> stop. No, don't touch me. <laughs> no. So Electra dies. Surprise! Surprise! At least at least she found out that Ben wasn't actually the guy who killed her father. Because we kind of left this out. She went after Daredevil thinking that he was the killer because his stick was what killed her father. So she thought that he killed her. But so then, then she stabbed him in the shoulder, took off his mask, and found out that he was derp faced Ben Affleck. And her tone again changed so much. Like, yeah, it's like you killed my father. It's like, and then just like, <gasps> oh, my oh my god, god no. Ben. <laughs> no, it's like, well, I'm so sorry. No. <laughs> well, you don't know that he didn't kill your father. Yeah. Like we know because he's Ben Affleck and he's the good guy that he didn't. But for all Bad you, guy. but for all you know, he could still have killed her father. But no, she figures out it was Bullseye, and then gets killed by him. But so Daredevil, he goes and voodoo, voodoo hoodoo. He goes and fights the kingpin. Voodoo. Or no, wait, I skipped a little bit. We end up right back at the beginning of the movie now. And he fights Bullseye in one last little battle and throws him onto the hood of a car. And I... L I love... Sorry. I love the bit in the fight where his, um... He runs out of throwing stars because he's got his belt buckle has a bunch of throwing stars on him, on it. He runs out of throwing stars, so he busts up a stained glass window, and then he just catches chunks of glass, and then he's just sitting there with like stacks this tall of just shards of glass, and he just start tossing them at Ben Affleck and like making it rain. And of course. Uh... The perfect way to dodge stuff is just flip backwards multiple times. Oh, yeah. In yeah. one direction. Yeah, he's definitely going to miss. And he so, does. Yeah, That's somehow he That's the thing that sucks. I don't understand how he misses that. He didn't really dodge that well. No, but so then he gets a bullet through his hands, and he does, like, the Jesus Christ pose. He's like... Because Cause they're in a church. <laughs> There's got to be symbolism. But so he goes and fights the kingpin, and... Yeah, here you go. About to kill the kingpin, slams down the stick, but then it's real. He didn't actually kill him. And then the kingpin goes, "Why?" 
And then this is this is Ben Affleck's response. So now it's now you've decided that killing people is wrong and that you shouldn't kill people. It just now. Yeah, just now he realized, "Oh, I I shouldn't kill people because I'm not the bad guy." <sighs> no one of you didn't get a sequel. But so everything goes well. And Joe Pantoliano is typing up his little essay report, and he, he's gonna expose to the world that Matt Murdock is Daredevil. Then, in what I think is the most unrealistic thing about this movie, is this. This is a city born of heroes. Presses the delete button, and it just starts going through and automatically, like, backspacing his whole thing. Are you kidding me? Like, this seems like a minor thing to get angry about, but... It's not how computers work! I am convinced that no one did any research before making this movie. Yeah, there was that, and then what was the other thing? And, and, and then he... The other thing was the rose. Uh, the unrealistic rose at the beginning. Oh. Yeah, where he grabs the petals of the oh, rose yeah. and starts bleeding randomly. He grabs... Yeah, those are the two most unrealistic things in this movie it's about like, superheroes. Um, I'm pretty sure the thorns are on yeah, the, the thorn. Yeah, the thorns are on the stem. He squeezes <laughs> the petal part and starts bleeding. Like, you can see the blood coming out of his hand as a kid when his dad dies. But so... Then, this movie wanted to set up for a sequel. There is a mid credit scene! Because evil always survives. Bullseye. With the help of evil men. Bullseye. Bullseye! <laughs> oh... So that was Daredevil, and to be completely honest, I don't hate this movie. I just don't like it. There are parts that I do enjoy. Some of the action sequences are actually really cool, especially the ones involving Ben Affleck as Daredevil fighting. Uh, the Kingpin and uh, what... Bullseye are the best parts. I like making fun of the soundtrack. Um, there are good things about this movie, and I definitely think the uh, director's cut is much better. The director's cut adds in 30 extra minutes of uh, footage. It adds in a whole subplot with Coolio. And it's really... A much better movie. It's still not a great movie, but oh, so it's... I can turn my phone on silent, but you won't turn your phone on silent. I see how it is. I can't put my phone on silent. <laughs> His phone just and, vibrated, and guys. You, and you, the, they can't hear. But so yeah, Mason, your thoughts on Daredevil? Well, I cry inside. It's crap. I don't like it. It's terrible. As a movie, it's terrible. As a funny bad, it's a different story. Yeah. So, as a movie? So, as as an actual movie, I'm going to give Daredevil, the theatrical cut, I'm going to give a D. The extended cut, the director's cut, I am going to give a B-. minus. I definitely recommend, if you didn't like the theatrical cut of Daredevil, I would recommend checking out the director's cut just to see if maybe you'll like it more, because it does... It does add quite a bit to the story, and the flow of the story is a little bit better, and you get a little bit more of uh, Foggy and stuff. And Coolio is great. Yep. Not really. And if you're like me, where you only saw this version, and only going to watch this version, 
um, I'd give it a D minus. <laughs> it was bad. <laughs> As a funny bad, I am gonna give Daredevil the theatrical cut an A. I'm gonna give it a B plus. This movie had roastable material at almost every single turn. You know, it's pretty hilarious. The stuff that's supposed to be serious is just not taken seriously. Yeah, especially because of the fact that you have cheesy, jokey stuff in there, so it just makes the the serious stuff more cringy. But thank you guys for watching this video. If you have seen Daredevil, uh, let us know in the comments what you thought about it, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Get him, Matt. Hell's Kitchen is my neighborhood. I prowl the rooftops and alleyways at night, watching from the darkness, forever in darkness. A guardian.